contrary to popular belief, Velcro was not invented by aliens or Vulcans. The idea came to George de Mestrel, a Swiss electrical engineer, one day in 1941, where upon hunting with his dog in the Alps, he became focused on the burdock seeds, or burrs, that stuck to his clothes and his dog's fur. Curious about how they worked, he proceeded to view them under a microscope and noticed hundreds of hooks that would catch onto anything with a loop, like cotton. If he could figure out how to duplicate the classic hook and eye attachment on a miniature scale, he could imagine a new realm of possibilities would be available for binding materials. He took his idea to Lyon, France, at the time one of the world's most noted epicenters for contemporary weaving. There he found one weaver who produced two cotton strips that worked in the way he had envisioned. But after realizing the cotton wore out quickly, Mestrel turned to a newly available synthetic fiber, nylon. Nylon had only recently been invented and had a number of advantages. It doesn't break down very easily, rot or attract mold, and it can be produced in various thicknesses which added to a plausible versatile solution for bringing the new technology to market. Mestrel also discovered that under hot infrared light, nylon forms hooks perfect for the hook side of the fastener. It was then he had to figure out a way to make the loops and to mechanize the process. He found that nylon thread, when woven in loops and heat treated, retains its shape and durability. However, he discovered that the loops had to be cut in just the right spot so they could be fastened and unfastened numerous times, a task that would prove to be extremely difficult. Never giving up, he finally had the idea to trim the tops off the loops, creating hooks that would match them perfectly. Mechanizing the process took eight years, and it took another year to create the loom that trimmed the loops after weaving them. He would name his product Velcro, which originates from the French words for velvet, velour, and hook, crochet. In the end, it took 10 years to develop the process. And in 1951, he submitted his idea for patent in Switzerland. It was subsequently granted in 1955, patent 2,717,437 with the Swiss government velvet type fabric and method of producing the same. Mestral opened shops all over Europe and Canada and branched out to the textile center of Manchester, New Hampshire in 1957. Velcro became a registered trademark in the US on May 13, 1958. Columnist Sylvia Porter wrote in her column Your Money's Worth of August 25, 1958. It is with understandable enthusiasm that I give you today an exclusive report on this news. A zipperless zipper has been invented, finally. The new fastening device is in many ways potentially more revolutionary than was the zipper a quarter century ago. Despite the hype surrounding its introduction, Velcro was actually thought of by most critics as a fairly impractical invention. Until… In the 1960s, it was readily used by NASA to help astronauts get in and out of their bulky spacesuits, and even used successfully during the Apollo missions to the moon, anchoring equipment to astronauts for convenient access in zero gravity situations. Finally, Velcro had a purpose, but sadly this only enforced the view that Velcro had few uses on Earth. Eventually skiers and scuba divers began using Velcro on their wetsuits, which led children's clothing manufacturers to take notice. The fastening was so easy to use that it was perfect for kids too. So how strong is Velcro exactly? So strong that a 2 inch square piece can be enough to support a 175 pound person in situations you might not want to try at home. The strength of Velcro depends on a few factors. How well the hooks are embedded, along with the amount of surface area contact, and the strength of the force attempting to pull it apart. A Michigan State University study suggests that Nano Velcro could hold objects together about 30 times stronger than conventional epoxy adhesives, binding solids together so powerfully that the materials themselves would break before the pads of hooks came apart. This tiny version of the material is carpeted with hook-ended carbon tubes, each just millionths of a millimeter across. Unfortunately, no one has yet found a way to grow carbon nanohooks routinely. Mestrel, who died in 1990, would no doubt be into the idea. Almost a decade after his death, Mestrel was inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame in 1999 for his amazing invention. Give it up, folks. Velcro! Velcro is a practical and effective tool and used in many industries and products. It has been used to bond home furnishings, close backpacks and pockets, hold together a human heart in surgery, 
Okay, maybe not hold together a human heart in surgery, but for several years it was the way to fasten shoes over laces. Anyway, think about the fact that if you're a guy, you are probably wearing laces. How does that make you feel? Not very cool, dude, but Velcro? That's another story. Velcro has even been given recreational uses. Have you ever played tag rugby or played a Velcro ball and catch game? Jumping onto a Velcro wall is a novel activity that looks attractive to many of us, to be sure. But for those of us not so lucky, the mere sound that Velcro makes is almost as pleasing and satisfying as popping bubble wrap. 